for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode, we have the beautiful, the phenomenal astro fashionista. The crowd goes wild for Tamari. Oh my gosh, you guys. Uh, of course, this episode is going to be about astrology. Um, but we're going to really get into... How to find love in 2024? Does it exist? Is it in store? Uh, where do I go and get it? Can I buy some? What is it going to take? Uh, you always know I start off the episode with when did you first fall in love with yourself? People are familiar with you, though, but not everybody has seen your past episodes. So if you haven't seen mm. any episode that I've done with Tamara, you need to go back and watch it because it's always phenomenal. But this is uh, a colleague of mine. I send my clients to her. She's also a, a lifelong friend. We've known each other over 20 years. And, like we go back. But I trust her when it comes to uh, Zodiac guidance. And so instead of telling us when you first fell in love with yourself, you're going to tell us when you first fell in love with astrology. Oh, now that's easy. I was over here really trying to wrap my brain like, what's my profound answer? Um, okay, when I fell in love with astrology, I was six years old. So just a quick story. Uh, my dad had a naming ceremony for me when I was a baby. His friend, Baba Doya, he's still a spiritual advisor to me today, did my natal chart reading when I was a baby. So there was little things that, you know, we, I followed growing up that my dad would say like, oh, Baba Doya said this, you can't do this, you can't do that. Um, but the first time I asked about Zodiacs, my friend Milan Wiley, she's, she's a Capricorn. You're going to be so happy that she, of course she's a Cap. She's going to be happy that I'm shouting her out. Um, <laughs> December 22nd she asked do we me, like the credit or something I think no, caps like the credit <laughs> Capricorns love credit um she asked me my zodiac sign in Miss Greenlee's class at Windsor Hills Elementary School shout out to Windsor Hills um and I was like what's the zodiac sign so I mm -hmm. learned vividly and I have bad memory so like I can remember zodiac stuff like I'll remember people's zodiac signs and not their name but like generally my memory is pretty bad Neptune trying uh Mercury but anyway um <laughs> So um, I asked my dad and he like, he like showed me, like we had like constellations in our garage and he was like telling me. So that's like when I think I really first fell in love. So fast forward to um, college, um, I met the Astral Twins in my office of my first job out of college. Their manager worked in my office and um, I was like going through a hard time. I've talked about this. I don't know for people that don't are not familiar with my story. Mm -hmm. I lost my mom at 13 to suicide. It was very traumatic. It was very I didn't deal with it for years. It came back up in my early 20s, anxiety, depression. Like I suffered in silence for a long time. And so um, astrology really helped me understand myself. And so when I met the Astral Twins, I was like, oh, I love astrology. And they looked at me, they're like, you're either a Taurus or a Scorpio. And I'm a Taurus sun, but I have a Scorpio rising. Mm. So does Spicy Mighty. Scorpio rising's in the house. Uh, <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, uh, I just was like obsessed that they could do that. And so I started learning how to recharge myself. Um, and my Capricorn boyfriend at the time was like, you need to get a bit, make a business out of this. You know, Capricorn's I'm always like literally leading, feeding directing. In, I'm literally feeding into this. <laughs> my mom was a Capricorn too, by the way. This is like, there's a trend here. So... <laughs> Shout out to 1227. We're not saying we're the best sign, but we just happen to like help you with all of your purpose and being Isn't that in existence. Crazy how all the main, <laughs> the main moments are literally with Capricorn connected. That's what That's we do. Crazy, That's what we do. Crazy shit. So, um, so yeah, I um, started studying and like this was a because so this was not TikTok era. This mm -hmm. is not even YouTube is still kind of like so astrology is not a thing like it is now. Yeah, it's always been, it's been around for thousands. You were thousands on astrology years. before it's, folks even knew what that was. Right. And so this is like a time where I'm like, nobody's going to pay me for this. Like, no, I'm going to go my safe route. So I work in product development. So I started working for different brands, marketing, product development. Um, and so I always did both. And so um, I was just doing it for fun. And then I decided to start, actually start a business 2015. And I just announced it in my Scorpio boyfriend. <laughs> built that website <laughs> he also helped me with mine at the time. he did Sh not finish so oh, i don't know what that says about scorpios i want to have to give the project to somebody else yes 
Well, what? Girls, I love y'all. Don't be listening to Spicy Mighty. That was one. Look, I was mixing <laughs> business with pleasure, and what? your boyfriend was helping build my That's site. Did not he finish went. it. I really think it was connected to me, though. He was like, I'm not dealing with her or her friends. Like after we break, he's not going to help you still. Like he's not. There's no incentive for him. And this, and so, this is true. But like, yeah. <laughs> so then I found somebody else to build my website, then reference them to you. Yes. Then she didn't finish your she site. Did, she, yeah. She kind of did. She <laughs> what got is me that? to like a okay place. Anyway, we sidetracked. <laughs> We're not trying to diss these people. Okay. Love and go light. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Generic love and light. Um, so. Love and light. <laughs> That's what people say when they're just. Whatever. Generic love Generic and light. Love and light. <laughs> um, we're being shady. Okay. But anyway. Let's... Okay. And, and see. And back to. And back, back to. Back to important things. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I was doing reading. So, anyway, lo and behold, Astro Fashionista was born officially. And so, I help people with, you know, life's. And you've been through all the certifications, love. you've done all the stuff, classes, yes, I, everything. Yes. Because we don't meet like a lot of astrologers that are like, right. got the credentials really, and you actually like studied and trained I'll it. I put in my time. Even yeah. when I announced my website, I was like, you know, I'm an expert at this. What's Malcolm Gladwell? So I was like, I've been over 10,000 hours. I'm ready. And I'm still learning and growing. And um, I just graduated from UCLA Executive MBA program um, in June of 2023. I'm going to give myself my flowers because... I'm a serious businesswoman and I think I want people to like, I think astrology helped me figure out my purpose, A, that I have all these different aspects. I have the intuitive aspect. I have the business savvy. I love beauty. I love creating. And so just my product line, Gift of the Nile, is yeah. like really that. It's like mixing the Egypt. My name means Gift of the Nile. Tom Mary was an ancient name for Egypt. And then, you know, I'm helping people with wellness. It's connected to the stars yep. and the elements. And so it's, and it's dedicated to my parents because my dad, you know, as an African history scholar, he Egypt was poured into me and my mom, if I could have helped her, I would have. Yeah. And so it's like it's a combination of those two things. So and I was just telling our friends in the studio, we have a live audience today. <laughs> I was like me and Madi have literally <laughs> grown up together. Yes. Like we've been friends for over 20 years and we've been at all these important life stages. Oh, my gosh. Huge milestones together. And like we knew we would be there. Yeah. Like it wasn't a matter of, like we're hyping each other up, but I'm like, we're here and we're still going. Like we're never going to be satisfied with just where we are. Cause we're ambitious women. Yep. But I think we recognize that we see the potential in yeah. each other. And so we constantly support. And so like, I think that's important also, you know, Venus in the sixth house. I'm very blessed. With women <laughs> in my life. <laughs> Trying my mid heaven, my career point. <laughs> well, I credit you all the time for um, helping propel me in the direction of sitting in confidence with my purpose um, because I always talk about how you read cards for me one day and you also did like a reading for me and this is a time when I was uh, working for a company and I was doing my nine to five thing but I was also trying to like grow the spicy life and you were like if you don't make a decision the universe is going to choose for you and I was like oh but I can't like I want the comfort of this like paycheck but I also want to grow this spicy mm -hmm. life. And so, you know, it was hard because I also have a Capricorn husband mm -hmm. who was very much like, no, we want that firm paycheck coming right. in because that's what makes sense. And I just did an episode with um, a, a Broderick Hunter and he's a, you know, a phenomenal model, you guys. And so if you have an episode, like if you have time, like go back and listen to that episode. But I'm talking about getting fired from that job and how like I had to take accountability in the role that I played with that firing but it ties into you because that firing was the universe making the decision for me <laughs> that and was, that's when I went the spicy life right. full time and that was hard y'all like I remember you telling us that story <laughs> I was boohooing and we were all around <laughs> we didn't even have like you know usually your friends like girl it's not that bad no we were like Madi, I like, know and they haven't heard like the full story of like what I didn't share the no like, the what, what you, happened no, yeah of course but I brought it up in the last episode so if you guys can go listen to Broderick's episode but I say this to say you've been like an intricate part in like me helping find and discover and like I used to be a doubter around astrology because I always felt like I can't be a Christian and believe right. in astrology and you did an episode with me when I first started at iHeart at 92.3 and you said like God created the moon, the universe, the stars, the sun. You think that he wouldn't make everything connected. You think that right. he wouldn't like give us all these like right. signs and things that could help guide us along the way. Right. You were like the North Stars in the Bible. And I was like, 
<laughs> and I just became more open to it. <laughs> priests in, in ancient times, the religious priests, they were astrologers. There was no separation. It separated when it didn't serve the church anymore. We ain't going to go down that path. Okay, yeah. So we, but we don't have to go down the route. You can be Christian route, and still. But that helped me like. Be guided by Balance it. both. Because yeah. it is very fun and entertaining. And like, I play with you guys a lot because I'm a Capricorn. And. I mean it wholeheartedly when I say that we are the best sign. <laughs> I'm done. But it's confirmed every single time I reference or talk to Tamari because Capricorns, like most humans, we don't like going through lows. And I feel like because we're used to being conquerors, you know, 24 seven and handling our business, you help me get through those lows with telling me, well, like, oh, you're mm -hmm. rising and moon are ascending in the da 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 da. And that's why I wanted to do this episode, because right. if you guys have had a funky ass 2023 year, you want to talk to Tamari because she helped me. I called her in this like low and I was like, what is going on with my life? Like and I'm, and I had to preface it with I am very grateful for everything. But, <laughs> but I feel like taking on these different roles in my life is hard. These transitions are hard and I don't feel like I'm killing it the way that I should. Right. Cause we have these moments of doubt and you told me when I'd be coming out of that funk. And I was like, Oh, if I need to know when I'm going to get out of the funk, the rest of the world needs to know when their sign is going to get out of the funk. Yeah. And that's why I brought you on. You're going to tell us when we're getting out of out the, the funk. funk. Okay. <laughs> I, I love this this question i okay i love astrology because it's a great tool to understand timing and that life is cycles and nothing is always up and nothing's always down there's this medium that's ma'at in in ancient egypt that's balance mm -hmm. like that's what we're trying to get to a state of like inner peace mm -hmm. that we are just comfortable living and so the astrology is a guide right so i like to say i can tell you the window of opportunity for when things are more beneficial yeah love is more be beneficial so we're going to talk about venus through the signs in 2024 but like it's up to you to like be ready be healthy be healed um get out there the window's yourself. there but the are you prepared there. for it right yeah. are you walking through the door that's open for you and so that's why i think th this discussion is important but i also think you have to live like i don't there's times where, yes, I'm like looking at my chart. I'm like, okay, I know Jupiter's in my science in the seventh house. Like I have generally no, <laughs> but then I'll go live day to day. Like I'm not every single day mm -hmm. framing everything around this. I use it as a tool when I need to. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to go through it, but I just want to tell everybody that like astrology is just a tool. It's not like a, it's not black or white. Yeah. <laughs> you can believe as much as you want or not. And we're having fun also, but just know that th these are possibilities. Yeah. I, uh, I also want to add this. So like we just had a session with the client, right? And you are walking her through a window of opportunity for love. I've been trying for the longest to get her out of a situationship. And I love that you were able based on like her chart because you needed like her birthday, uh, city that she's born in mm -hmm. and uh, hometown. And the time. Yeah, wait, hometown yeah. time. And, then and birthday, birthday, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you were able to say, hey, here's this window of opportunity for you to have, like, the real love that you want. And so, like, it clicked for her because she was like, oh, if that's what the real love is going to be and that's when, and I have this window of opportunity, I probably should start making strides to right. releasing right. <laughs> this person who ain't it. You don't want to. And I think it helped. Hands. I think it was, like, a nice push and guide that we can have common sense. We can have all of the educational tools. We can, you know, for as you know, brilliant as we are as humans and still make emotional decisions that don't right. serve us. So sometimes astrology, like you said, it's a guide that pushes us in maybe an additional direction where we need to hear more, you know, affirmation that we're going in the right direction or maybe we should pivot right and i like and i do like it for that as well yes 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 and so it, i agree with you use in conjunction or with your relationship expert and your <laughs> yes. psychologist Stealing the your therapist your <laughs> pastor like everything that you use for use your, all the stuff still read like, the bible do everything do okay? all the things because jesus yeah. was a capricorn y'all <laughs> Oh and gosh. even if you say, well, he wasn't really born in December, the world chose December oh and gosh. for him to be a Capricorn <laughs> for a reason out of all the signs that you guys could, they could have manufactured for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior to be, you guys made him a cap. Okay. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm so just saying. He wasn't, we'll he, he wasn't made a Taurus. He was made a Capricorn. <laughs> okay. So if Mary we'll did birth him that. in December or he was birthed in, I don't know, February, we still want to believe he's a Capricorn. Oh my goodness. So there's something there. Okay. He has I'm Capricorn you, energy. I'm gonna let you have that one. <laughs>
Melissa Capricorns be it. out here saving them. We've been saving them. <laughs> Look at Tamari's life. We've been saving her, saving her. Okay, and now we're going to get to the meat. Okay, oh share gosh. with us, because we are in, and I keep like yes, saying no other sign matters in December, but that's not true. Sagittarius is before. But I don't know like your order, so you I'm are the expert in the, this. I'm going to go through the What can we look order. forward to? Okay, so first let's generally talk about what's going on. We have the North Node. So the North Node in astrology is a point that's connected to the moon. It's collect, connected to our eclipses. So when we have eclipses, the North Node's within, or South Node, they're within 18 degrees of a full moon or new moon. So that's when they become big and powerful. So the North Node has to do with like a destiny. Okay. Usually when the big things that happen that just like, Ooh, I can't believe that like shook up my life might be like in, during the eclipse. And so we have that in Aries and the South Nodes in Libra. And why that's significant is because it's the relationship between self and others. Mm. Like this is the relationship axis right now that we're all in. And so the, the nodes go back and they go backwards in sign. So like we just got out of Taurus and Scorpio. So shout out to all the Scorpio rising, <laughs> Scorpios, Taurus, fixed signs. We've been, been going through it though. Yes. Like having all kinds of trials and tribulations. Scorpio rising. Yes. And so that has, we're coming out of that, but that's self worth, like value and immaterial and material. Now we're on, okay, what are you going to do with this information? And yeah. what are you going to do about your relationships? So all, all in all, people are going through changes. So we're going to talk about the opportune time. So like, Ground yourself in where you are in your relationship right now, whether you're married, single, dating, in a committed relationship, and keep this in mind as we go through the signs. So Venus, a lot of people are probably familiar with, is the sign of love and beauty. Um, it's connected to relationships in astrology, and um, where it is in your chart shows like it's like your love language, mm -hmm. essentially. Your moon is equally important, if not more important, I believe, because that's your what you need to be nurtured. That's what you need to be fulfilled emotionally. So if a person isn't speaking to that, I find there's usually a hard, compatibility is gonna be hard when mm -hmm. they don't speak your love, like your literal but love But in order language. for you to articulate your moon, you need to know your moon. Yes. Because you, you might know not know moon. what's going on like if you, you have a Virgo moon. moon. So mm -hmm. Madi has a Virgo moon. Virgo is about service. So you show your love by doing things for people. Like you're going to be the analytical friend. You're going to tell people when they need to be better. <laughs> 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 not always in the nicest way. Uh, but you will be. But it's out of love. Like literally it's because. But you, did I make you better though? <laughs> like, <laughs> did you what, die? That's what, <laughs> <laughs> did you die? You're making it to 2024 better. <laughs> yes. Yes. So that's your love. <laughs> so it's important to know that me as an Aquarius moon, the biggest gift I can give to someone is for them to be free to be themselves. Like I want you to be yourself and I will support you in that. So I can love each friend, no matter if my friends are different, I love them all for different reasons because I love a certain thing about them because yeah. I see myself in that. And so I think like that's two different ways of loving. Now, someone that has a Leo moon opposite Aquarius wants all that love on them <laughs> for me so I might be like well I have all these other people to love and it's like no I'm the number one <laughs> yeah that matters you know where someone that has maybe um for you let's say uh Pisces moon which is the opposite Virgo that Pisces they don't need they want you to feel when they're sad and you're like just tell me when you're sad yeah and the Pisces moon's be like you can't feel text. it like you know, <laughs> you know what I mean like like you should be able to feel it I want us to be connected like where's your compassion <laughs> you know and so like those are two so like it's important to know those things but it's also important to know your Venus because that is also how you act in relationships so even though I have this Aquarius moon this Venus and Aries of mine is a wall sometimes and mm. impulsive and likes the beginning and the fun and excitement mm -hmm. and but then the Taurus in me wants to stick it through when it ain't working anymore yeah. <laughs> so like the self-awareness right like you have to know all these th these things and so like if, if you're going to know something if you want to know a little bit about yourself and how you're showing up in relationships and why you're going through the things that you're going through look to your moon and your Venus for sure Mars can be your sexual decisions um your your rising is how you go about portraying to the world <laughs> like who you <laughs> you are and then that sun is like that ego part so it's all important right so we're gonna go through venus through the signs okay so first i'm going to tell you when venus is in a certain part of your house what that means because this is going to make sense as we go through the signs so when you have venus in your first house like transit i'm talking about where venus is in the sky now as relation to your natal chart um what if people don't know houses though say what houses are uh, 
the houses are the areas of our charts in our natal charts that are associated with a part of our life. So I wish we could superimpose right here. I know. Okay, Just I wish I had my little wheel. <laughs> can I put a, can I give you an image yeah. to like impose so people would know like, a oh, this chart. is. Yes. House. So the house, um, we, we, as astrologers, when we're tracking what's going on in the sky, now we're looking at where the planets are falling in relation to some, someone's house. So when I'm doing your reading, I'm like, okay, where are the planets now? Is Venus in your first? Is in your 10th? Or is Jupiter in your seventh? So, that's just a, we're not going to go too deep on that, but I just want you to hear this because then I'm going to tell you where, when Venus is in this part of your chart. And that's an opportunity time for you. That's when you guys want to be on so it. So just take the notes. Okay. So when Venus is in the first, you're more attractive. Typically that's the time where, unless it's retrograde, where you can get a haircut, you can do a makeover. You're feeling more sensual, especially for women. Like they just look more attractive. So be in the streets when Venus is in the first. <laughs> You have um, permission. Be in the streets and also get like do your all your beauty treatments. Men do like if you guys are afraid of dating apps, they need to be hopping on Bumble right this very second. Ooh. Look, start swiping, liking, right. communicating because when she tells you these, you know these windows, you want to be on it, right? right? Like it's not enough to just like want it and dream for it. You have to have aligned behaviors, like I always tell you guys. So get on it. Tamari's about to give you these gems. Start taking notes. Take the notes. Okay. So when Venus is in the fifth house, that's romance, dating. That is a good time to actually do courting and dating. Um, and it's more fun. It's more playful. You're just more in your game. When Venus is in the seventh, you are you can attract a more serious relationship, depending on your chart. Like, again, this is loose. Um, but if it's there, you might actually attract like a long-term boyfriend or even a husband or a wife. Um, and then when Venus is in the 11th is when you need to be out with your friends. Mm -hmm. And you need to be networking and being in Meeting. groups and mm -hmm. you need to be out conferences, all those things. So that's a general guide. So what I'm going to do is go through each sign and tell you like the month of 2024 when um, Venus will be in this area. Okay. We're starting with Aries because they're the first. They actually think they're the best, but because you know. <laughs> they're, they're Aries is like, we're first. <laughs> um, okay. So for Aries, um, Venus will be in your first house. You'll be more attractive in April. So that's a good time maybe for a makeover. It's, it's close to your month, birthday month if, if you're April Aries. Um, so that's a good time for that. Um, it will be in your fifth around summertime, like July. So that's when, again, dating is good. It will be in your seventh when you can attract a partner um, in Libra in September. Now, remember, we're having eclipses. So a lot of you guys are exiting relationships, some of you, and some of you are starting new ones. And then when you need to be um, out with your friends, it's actually earlier in the year. So like February. Mm. Okay. So that's Aries. You know, let's shake it up. We're going to go out. I'm not going to do it in order. I'm going to, because Pisces always is last. So I'm going to just bounce off. That's, so we I don't understand why middle. we're not starting with Capricorn. We're not starting with Capricorn. Let's, let's get that <laughs> You're out. trying to punish me. Well, let's get that out of here right here now. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Okay. So Pisces. Um, Pisces, the first, um, Venus will be in your first in, sorry, but like start it with up. like, this is when you need to, this is when date you need love. to, um, actually get a makeover. Okay. So makeover. You're feeling more sexy. Oh, cause you're talking attractions. So right, in this attraction. house, it's, this is when you'll be the most attractive. You'll be the most attractive. Also, okay, you'll so be this is when you will be the most attractive in March time. In March. And also okay. potentially by your birthday. Cause, um, March Pisces, there's March Pisces, um, when you need to be actually dating or planning a date summertime again. So that July time, um, when you need to be out with your friends is actually the end of the year. So say all yes to all the holiday parties. Um, and then when you could potentially attract a long term partner, like someone um, that you can go the distance with is in August. So summertime. Hmm. Okay. So we're going to go to Taurus now. I do like Tauruses. Yes. Of you. <laughs> you know, Tauruses have been going through it. I actually have been talking to a lot of Taurus people, Taurus moon, Taurus um, rising, lots of changes. Okay. So Taurus, um, you're most attractive actually around your birthday month too. So you'll note that the reason why this is going to be the same is because Venus only travels um, up to like two signs away from the sun based on degree. So it's always traveling really close to the sun. So your Venus sign is um, going to be either in your sign or only two signs away, either the sign before yours or after up to two signs. Okay. So Madi is a Capricorn and your Venus is actually in um, Aquarius. Yeah, your Venus is in Aquarius. You're like, what does that mean? <laughs> like Aquarius <laughs> is a sign after Capricorn. So that's just an example. We'll come back to that. She likes uh, a little bit of quirks about people, people that are like 
kind of cold. We talked about this. <laughs> Heartless. I like, I like assholes. <laughs> we did talk it gives about me this. permission to be myself. Right, okay. right. She likes that. <laughs> okay, so Taurus, you're most attractive around May. Um, when you need to be dating, August. So plan those dates. Um, when you can find a serious uh, partner, October. So fall. You'll have a fall boo. And um, when you should be out with your friends, it's actually early spring, like to kick off spring. Like you should have a spring party, Taurus, um, early March. When you say be out with your friends, are you saying Network, to like going socialize, yes. make business moves, or are you saying socialize to meet a bay? It could be. So the 11th house rules both networking, it rules friends, it rules like money from your career. So it's associated with things like sororities and um, I don't know if you're a part of like my grandma's. I won't even give that example. It's too weird, y'all. But y'all get the point. What is your grandma a part of? What freaky she, dicky okay, stuff is your grandma? Now, my grandma is, she's legally blind. So she joined, she's a extrovert like on 20 so she joined a blind federation oh she's a delta too so like she's don't a- <laughs> ever get it twisted look what's her That's what's what her I mean? sign she's scorpio she's a scorpio <laughs> so, so I'm, like, I'm like i was gonna say the blind you federation. had no excuse to not be social when you were blind Grandma and you join a blind out. organization and you're still popping year. they go to shut like, they go up to boat ride yacht rides like they do a lot of stuff so like it was kind of funny. It's the me. blind leading the blind. <laughs> it's, literally, it's literally the blind because she's like more sighted than most of them. So it's, she got a little bit. It's more. a whole thing. Yeah, that is dope. Though. I love that she's so still in the street. You example. guys have no excuse. Granny is Grandma, in the street. Grandma, she has a boyfriend who's blind. She met him through the Federation. So I'm just saying. Look, mm-hmm. Steve. She shout got, out to Steve. She found a blind lover. Shout out to and Steve. And that's look, that's real love right there. She was right married there. 51 years to my grandpa. That's great. Love is blind right there. No, literally love is blind. Dang. Yeah. Okay. This is inspo. So that's the 11th house. So now y'all. <laughs> <laughs> the they're Federation. Like, they're booking <laughs> cruises now. Exactly. Watch. They're going to be out. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. That's so funny. Okay. So now we're on Aquarius. Okay. Speaking of Aquarius. Okay. Aquarius, you're most attractive around February. So around your month. Um, when you should be going out on dates, planning dates, uh, that would be early June, like June, just before summer kicks off. Um, when you should be networking with your friends, out with friends, is in November, um, fall time. And then serious partnership can come to you um, around July. Mm, okay, so summertime still, yeah. Summertime is, is popping. Okay, um, now we're on Gemini. Okay, so Gemini, don't. <laughs> I got too many Geminis in my life. You already know. We I love do, me a Gemini, but we do whew. have a lot of Geminis around us. Um, but they keep they keep it spicy. They do keep it spicy. <laughs> Pun intended. They keep me on my toes. <laughs> okay, so um, I was trying to freeze these pains. Okay, so Gemini, you're most attractive June. So June, let's say it's like, like May, birthday around month your birthday ish. month, um, when you might attract a serious partner is um, November. So the end of the year. End of the year. Gemini's don't have patience, though. That's going to be hard. They don't. Um, they'll have a lot of in between. <laughs> <Those moments. laughs> there'll, <laughs> there'll be some situationships. There'll be some situationships <laughs> before here and there, then. <laughs> which might come about actually in April when they're out with their, doing the right things with their friends. <laughs> so, <laughs> things with their so the con- yeah. You know, okay. that's a precursor. Um, okay, so that's Gemini. Uh, Capricorn. Everyone's the favorite. moment. Oh, my gosh. We've been waiting for. Oh my God. Okay. So Capricorn, uh, you are most attractive, surprisingly, January, the kick off the year around your body. <laughs> we have another Capricorn in the of crowd, course. y'all. <laughs> you're like, wait, I'm surprised your response was, wait, no, that's really every month. But January, we're super on. <laughs> Me, I'm so humble. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so January we look good. January you looking okay. good. Okay, you need to be dating in May, so during the Taurus season. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And then um, serious relationships um, that you might attract are July, and it's like Fourth of July. Fourth. Of, oh, you yeah. guys need to be out in the streets. You need to be out. That's meet oh, someone. Can, sparks can literally yeah, fly. Yes, sparks. <laughs> oh, literally. Fireworks. Um, and then. Uh, we talked about tra- oh and then when you need to be out with your friends and networking that's october so oh meet someone at a pumpkin patch yes like, exactly get all the spice drinks lattes you can think of yeah and i feel okay. like i feel like well obviously a lot of signs like their season and so even though capricorn kicks off winter i think you know that fall season is is good generally for the caps you guys kind of come out of hibernation around that time yes 
Okay. This is exciting. Now, you guys are taking notes. Remember, my, <laughs> reminding you, take notes. Keep yes. going, Ta. Okay. We're cancer. We're, and we're meeting in the middle. We're almost there. Okay. So for cancer, um, our water signs, you are most attractive around uh, July. So that's your birthday month. And we're most of you. And then when you could attract a serious partner is actually at the beginning of the year. So you actually might kick off the year, uh, cancer. Um, maybe you had a boo over the holidays and it becomes more serious. It was cuffing season. Yeah, and cuffing all of season sudden... and you're committed. So that'll be interesting. Write in and let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Spicy. <laughs> I was cuffed and committed. Um, October is a good month uh, for dating for you and having fun and being more playful. And then um, December, so interesting enough, again, December, you'll have that energy where you're able to, you know, and maybe some of you guys will be getting engaged. Maybe it'll be like, you know. That's my favorite. Yes. So we like that. I love to hear it. Yes. Okay. Now we're on Sagittarius. Okay. Sagittarius, they're always in the streets. Um, But when they're going to be the most in the streets is September. (laughs) So there'll be extra in the streets. Their social calendar, that Labor Day, that whole everything. Um, You're going to be most attractive actually um, in November. So that's when you want to schedule maybe your makeup. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention, you guys? I'm reading for the sun sign. But if you know your rising sign, listen to that, too, because that's actually more in line with your actual chart. So just take notes on both signs if you know those signs. Um, OK, so oh, as they're listening, like as they're listening. Oh, OK. Like, yeah. So as they're listening, listen for both their moon and rising as you're describing it. Yes. So yes. like I want so because I'm Capricorn, Scorpio, rising Virgo moon, I want to pay attention to Scorpio and Virgo yes. and my cap as yes. you're talking. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the one that might actually resonate most is your rising because it's closer to the chart at the moment of birth because without getting too But technical. if I listen to all of those that I'm going to be out all the time all t- well, 24 which, months which then. No, no, no. <laughs> which is actually what you guys should be doing. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. And and it's well what's funny is that some people's charts like mine where I have Taurus rising in Scorpio. I mean Scorpio rising Taurus sun, it's always both axes. So like I'm always getting it good and bad on mm. both ends, you know? So I think for some listeners that will be the case, but some it'll just be you'll notice, oh, summer is my time, mm-hmm. you know, like just kind of summarize it for yourself. <laughs> um, okay, so Sag, we did the being attractive. We've been out with the friends. Um, you can have a serious relationship in June and dating is good in April. Um, okay, now we're on Leo. Marty is also my son part, is a Leo. She's also partial to Leos. Okay. Tell me what Princeton has in Princeton, store. Princeton, you are not dating nobody until the age of <laughs> the girls be on him. 16, Let me tell you, everybody sends in applications I, trying to submit early. I am not surprised, but no, he needs to develop <laughs> and grow as a man. Okay, he is a Capricorn. He be moon. pulling up. Let me tell you, preschool. <laughs> oh, they be on him. <laughs> I'm not even worried about no. Princeton will have plenty of suitors. Yeah, we know this. Um, okay, but this ain't for him right him. now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for Leo. Let's start with when you'll be most attractive because that's what you care about most. Okay, I'm just playing with you guys, Leo. Leos are vain. <laughs> it's okay. They are. They know they're vain too. Leos love being Leo. So Jayla's a Leo. Yeah, she is. Holly Berry, um, Barack Obama. Okay, so uh, July. <laughs> but what did he marry? A cap. Oh, God. Leo. Barack Obama, yes. the yes. leader remember of I the world because we don't count no other presidents. He married a Capricorn. Yes. I'm just saying. I remember I tried to hit you with Coretta Scott King was a tourist. She was like, but she was married to MLK. <laughs> <laughs> But she married a cat. <laughs> I'm like Malcolm X. <laughs> Janet okay, Jackson. Go Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Shall I keep going? <laughs> and at the time I said R. Kelly, but we can't, I, was like, I can't what? claim R. Kelly anymore. I'm like, that example, you said him and Tyrese. I'm like, those examples. Anyway. Okay. We can say. I, I do love Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, okay. So we, Leo. Most attractive in July, um, when you should be dating is November. So that's a good time to be out or planning dates and having fun. The fifth house is actually connected with Leo. So we love that. Um, when you can attract a serious relationship, actually February, like right in oh, early the, on, early so on in the year. day, you guys, which means get you, ready. Yes. Attract your person. Then you want to um, take maybe you guys join or go network together and you can do that in June. And then you guys date a lot in um the fall and then maybe it elevates to the next level Ooh. i like that little story for leo oh leo's are getting lucky next year i like you that. guys this is good news take this as like it's coming around the corner like yes. it's right there for you this 2023 f- 
phase will be ending soon. Right. Okay. And then now we're on Scorpio. We did Sag. Yes. Okay. So Scorpios. Scorpio's been going through it too. Um, I'm listening. That's Scorpio. Awesome. Actually, Venus is in your sign as we record right now in December. So you, you know, Scorpio risings. Oh, we are looking kind of cute though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Venus in our first house. <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> Um, but next year it'll be there also, um, in October. Um, and so you want to, uh, be out with your friends around August. So in the sign summertime, like maybe get a yacht or a little boat and do a little excursion mm. and tell your friends to get with their friends and you, you can all be friends. friends. Yes. Um, and then you can attract a serious relationship in the spring, like May, which is good. Um, so maybe you're doing that social yacht party with, with bay yeah. yes i love oh i love that i love that for scorpio people and yeah so we went through all of that okay next is virgo so we have two more i gotta listen to two virgo more, too dang yes two more two more left y'all okay so virgo virgo you are most attractive in august that's the kobe Vir, uh kobe section of a virgo r.i.p um so that's when you're looking good you're feeling good um, you can go date, you can have fun at the beginning of the year. So when everybody is coming off of the holiday season, you're actually keep that energy going. Um, and then you can attract a serious relationship potentially in March, which we like. So maybe you'll meet someone just after being out or even during the holiday season. And yeah, I think that was all for Virgo. Oh, be out with your friends in July. Hmm. Okay. Libra. Libra is the last one. Libras, they're nice. They, they My don't mom's mind. a Libra. My daddy's a Libra, too. My mom and dad were both Libras. That's, yeah, yes. that's, that's a lot. It's a lot of Libra, <laughs> that's yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot. I manage, <laughs> one, I manage one, and that's a lot. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay, so Libras, your pretty little cells will look good in September. Okay, so, so I'm telling my mom to dress up. Yes, dress up, okay. get your makeovers. Their Libras are into, a lot of them are into refinement, and mm -hmm. people that have Libra in their sign love that, that stuff. Um, so you want to plan your romantic dates in February. So be out there swiping on Bumble in February. Um, you can attract a serious relationship around April. And you should be out with your friends in July. Okay. I got to keep all these notes for my mom because I'm like, yes, I'm about to spicy set her up. Mama. I'm about to get her or get me a new daddy. So <laughs> spicy mama is, is not shy at all. So like no, she, she will is do not. the work. She will get out there. So I just got to tell her like, this is the this month is that when, you need to yes, be and, and she will be it. there. <laughs> yeah. She is. She, spicy mama will get on us for not. Tell she, your, tell, tell your grandmother to take her to your organization. My mom will be with somebody blind. He just, <laughs> as long as he like fills her energy, like a mom is open. I'm saying. I'm done. Like we need to be. I'm well, out here trying to set folks trying up. Trying to get the blind people at my grandma's group. Yeah. To find your mom. Share. Love. I'm like, grandma, does scary. Steve have a friend? Does Steve have a friend? <laughs> yeah, sharing is caring. Jeffrey, I know there's a Jeffrey. I know all the people in the because I hear about the stories <laughs> and the things they do. That is hilarious. Yeah, spicy mama. I think we can find her another source. <laughs> Good source. I'm just I'm saying from we're not else. we're not gonna eliminate anything we're going to use all of our resources was that all 12 signs yes we yay have okay we didn't go in order but we, everybody got red so everybody got red you guys have something hopeful to look forward to talk to me a little bit about like 2023 and how this has maybe like affected us coming from like I feel like we've been going through a lot with like recovery, even still from like COVID oh, and the shutdown sure. and our lack yeah. of socialization yeah. to now trying to get our lives like popping again. And it almost feels like we want to not count two years of our lives because of that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot has happened, right? Mm -hmm. In my situation, it was like I had my bundle of joy, my COVID baby, but I was like down for the count for a second. Right. And I feel like I'm just now starting to get back to self. Yeah. But when we go through these lows, like what what advice do you have for us to just in general that would help us with a little pick me up when our sign feels like ugh? Yeah, I think it's funny because even though all the signs we're going through, I mean, OK, so just to take a step back about the astrology and why some of these things are happening. I mean, we're right on the cusp of Pluto and Aquarius, which is a huge change because Pluto rules it's generational. So whenever Pluto moves into a new sign, there's like a new era. So we're moving, like we've already been in this information era, but we're going to be down like tenfold. And so Aquarius also rules people. So like we're seeing like 
out, you know, like wars. I mean, wars are always around, mm-hmm. but it's more visible for us. Now. Yeah. And that's the Aquarius technology piece. Mm. And so we can't shut it face. off. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think generally people are just tired. Like it's we're too we our bodies have not evolved yet to probably take the level of information ah, that we consume at the speed, every day. Yeah. Of what so we've grown like yes. technology wise. Yeah. And so I think there's like a general tiredness of this collectively uh, uh, our spirits being tired. Yeah. Right. But there's still so much work to do. And so that's where the nuance of your chart, like how do you, what's your contribution to getting us all through this? Right. So you're doing it through relationships. You're healing people by having them show up healthier. They're creating hopefully families that, you know, are breaking generational yes. curses. I just got a, um, a, what's it called? The little picture of the baby a sonogram. What is it? Oh, I love when that. They... Oh, the, mam- <laughs> uh, the ultrasound. 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 Yeah. I was like, what is it called? <laughs> and I got one at one point. <laughs> But yeah, I just got a picture from a client. She's like, I'm preggers. And I was like, so rewarding. Yeah. Right. Like you remember when she didn't know how she would get. And she just got like married this year. Like a lot of my clients have got married this year, but uh, she was like, she yeah, she had a lot of doubt. And so like just to see within like a year marriage and pregnancy, I'm like, yes, get a girl. And that's what keeps you like. Yeah. That was like my jolt. I needed that jolt. Yeah. Right. It's your why. And so I think right now it's more most important for people to find what is your why? Don't try to have somebody else's why. I think that is annoying also to see when like everybody is like doing one thing all of a sudden because it's popular mm-hmm. and it's trending and it's making money. It's like, no, find your purpose and stick to that because you're going to go further doing what you're born to do than versus like imitating what other people. We had this conversation. Yeah, I think on a previous episode too, we talked about like when a career path is trending or uh what people are interested in is trending other people like jumping on that thing and that not being authentic to them right. or even like their gift or their spiritual gifts there. Yeah. Um, so you're saying like, find your why, find your purpose. Find your why. Like, and that's to get to know yourself, whether it's through your chart or just, just journaling, like really know who you are and what you're born to do. That's the first, that is a journey in itself mm-hmm. for when it clicked for me. I, it, that took a while it took a long time yeah. for it to all click like okay and then when you get there that doesn't mean it's easy it just means okay now I have a destination but the, the journey there is like that's the hard part right yeah. so I think for everyone um, some of the big transits that we have coming up uh, along with Pluto and Aquarius which is technology change you know upheaval like we're going to be evolving and healing as a human race mm-hmm. like and that might mean some things have to be destroyed mm-hmm. you know and that's scary to think about but I don't worry about the how Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm just like, I'll just ride the wave and like do what I'm supposed to do here as my single human soul, Mm -hmm. you know? And so there's that we have Jupiter and Taurus right now. Um, Uranus is still in Taurus. So we've been seeing a lot of change to like finances, Mm -hmm. um, to agriculture, farming, um, earth, global warming, all those earthly money, all those things that are tangible material things have been changing. And then right now, things that are bad are being like exponentially highlighted because yeah. Jupiter makes things bigger. But then there's also some good coming about at the same time. So Jupiter always brings blessing, but it doesn't always only bring blessings. But it's going to be moving into Gemini next May in 2024. And that is about information and knowledge. Mm. And so I talked about this on another podcast, too, is that we're going to have to watch for fake news is coming back, y'all, mm. um, because Gemini is connected to Mercury and information and Jupiter is about exagger- exaggeration. It's bigger and spar- larger than life. So there's going to be a lot of fake news. It's an election year, right? Next year, too. So it sounds like we need to like also be protecting we need to be what we're consuming. spiritually protecting ourselves mm. from what we're consuming because Jupiter is connected to spirituality. Turn the social media off. Like do a social media detox. It's just, okay. We know it's an algorithm. We're going to see more of this certain thing. And yes, it can be fun. It can be a relief sometimes, but just have boundaries with it mm-hmm. um, because there's an, that's going to be something we'll deal with um, on the, I think we're going to see advances in um, language. Um, like just uh, I, I, what I really think is going to happen. I think translation will always be important, but I think we're going to get to a point where there's going to be a tool where we don't need to translate. We're going to say something. It's going to spit it out to somebody. They're going to understand us in another language. And we're going to have, com- we're going like to be able to converse with each other. an AirPod that I can like put in my yes, we're going to ear be able to, and, and I'll this, just be able to talk to you. Right. And this, things like this are already existing. So this, nah, this is not out of my genius <laughs> brain, Mary y'all. invented it. I mean, yeah, I invented this theory. No, <laughs> like this is, exi- but I'm just, I think that's going to come faster 
Um, I think that's going to happen during Pluto and Aquarius. I think it's going to happen when Jupiter enters Gemini. We'll see the crystallization of that. Like, oh, how do we advance communication and speech? Mm. Um, even, you know, things with deaf people. Like, there's going to be advancements there. Yes. I just said this like, the other day. Okay. Keep going. See? Um, and then another big thing. Oh, and then we talked about the North and South Node in, in Aries and Libra. Relationships being a theme and a topic. And... Um, yeah, that's enough. We talked about a lot. When, so uh, one of the things that I posed to you was like, I don't understand why I'm not a millionaire yet, right? Like <laughs> I've done episodes before with like, this is not the life that I imagined. But in my situation, I swore up and down I would be like balling millionaire now. I'm, I haven't, I can't believe I'm not like rich, rich. When am I going to see my millions next oh year? My God. Are the millions coming or what? What did the stars say about my money? Run me my money universe. I can't even. I'm about to really pull up Spicy Mighty's chart because I'm sick of her. <laughs> I know. But um, I want people to have hope too that like their financial I situations are going to change. I I literally think the same thing. I'm just a little more humble about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I really, I said this another thing. I, I read something today like stop when you stop living the life you were supposed to when you stop trying to live the life you were supposed to live or you thought you were supposed to live you can start living the one that's in front of you or something like that and I'm like yes like if that didn't work out go do this like you know like you got it that's Mars energy that's like keep going and it's easier said than done but I'm like don't oh, like release the idea things, ideas of things and how things are supposed to be this thing that we created when we were like five <laughs> like, <laughs> like would you trust the five-year-old you to be driving but i put a yacht on my vision board last year <laughs> so why is the yacht not here that's what i want to know <laughs> you know what there is always god's timing but there's also <laughs> like there's something that you're not ready to deal with mm. that yet that whether it's the maintenance you know or what? we don't know. Like there's some reason you don't got that yacht yet. I need to get my yacht license. If I, I if I, I learn know. how to drive it, if I. That's the takeaway. Find like a deck to like, where, where do you place yachts? Uh, See, you don't I don't even, even know. know where I'm going to park I mean, my yacht. You just want one for <laughs> appearances. That's why you ain't got a yacht. Tamir, are you approving your You're point right now? <laughs> take this. How serious am I about the yacht if I don't even have a parking space for it? Oh. I don't even know what body of water yachts go in. Is it salt water? Is it like ocean? I don't even know. Oh my god! I sea, like sea, sea what, what? I don't even know the different bodies of water. I'm not ready for my yacht. You're definitely not <laughs> ready for the yacht. Um. Okay. Let's look at let's look at Marty. Okay. Financial things are usually um, second eighth house transits because second house rules money. Eighth house rules like money with other people, mm -hmm. like uh, your spouse. Um, and so when you have planets transiting, there are eclipses. So you had eclipses there about three or four years ago. Wait, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So that made sense. So that, that was, was an good. increase in money, yeah. right? So you, that I want that you again. To another <laughs> <laughs> I want more. I'm ready for the next level. Tell me what month <laughs> I need to be willing and dealing that I'm going to be, I need that next hit. Like, come oh on. God. Okay. Okay. So what I will tell you is that. Um, the North Node right now is in your sixth house because we're both Scorpio rising, so we both have kind of have this placement. So as the North Node moves to your sixth house, not only do health things usually like become a priority, but you also uh, focus on changing the way you work in some way, like your day to day, your schedule, your routine, okay. and then that naturally affects your tenth house of career. And so I already know there are some changes coming, and then the North Node is going to be opposing your Mars. Um, which is your energy and like your energy level, how much do you give? So you need to, you definitely need to create some new sort of routine and boundaries for yourself in terms of like your work schedule. Um, not so good I don't know. That. You're not great with that <laughs> I'm at not good all. With you're that. horrible with yeah. that. <laughs> but I think what you'll find is that <clears throat> you have Mars in the 12th house. So you work in spurts. So like, if you're not feeling it, you're not going to do it. And Mars gets 12th house is about where things dissolve and are lost. Mm. And the Mars is about, going in action so it's a lost mars so it and it's in libra so you you want the pleasure you want the like so you have to feel inspired to be to go yes and so and i think inspo. if you set your day up in a way that is more honors that mm -hmm. like okay i know my energy is high during this i'm only going to take and you might do this i'm only going to take client calls during these two hours this is when i'm going to work on the paperwork this is like more like that um, and where you rest because you don't sleep either 
and I'm as a recovering non-sleeper. <laughs> I started sleeping like a month ago, y'all. I just started sleeping last week. Because no, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my son won't go to bed. I'm like, oh, no, I'm creating bad habits <laughs> for him. He's pulling all-nighters with me. I'm like, this is not good. So then I put him to work because I'm like, he needs to be efficient. And he has two Capricorn parents. So Prince is now on the payroll. Oh, yo, yo, Starting him young. He needs to sleep. He needs to earn his, uh, oh his, God, public, his so private funny. school. Uh, he I needs to earn that private school education. Oh, my God. This, you hear this? this I is know. not good. Well, you really need to. No, you really need to do that. Because you also you have Saturn and Pluto there. So I want you to honor your, you don't want some like I just found out I got high blood pressure. Remember I told you yes. like, I went to the doctor and they were going to send me to the emergency room because I wasn't sleeping and I was I just I was stressed about all kinds of stuff. Um, and I started sleeping. I was like, <laughs> I was like, none of these, there's no point to worry about worth the it, things yeah. that are here. I'm like, that thing will be done tomorrow. Like I'm trusting like God got me this far. I'm going to be OK. Whatever happens. Yeah. I will get through it and it can wait. Like that's like the new. So I feel like you need kind of that same more like giving yourself grace. I always talk about giving yourself grace. Like huh. you're never. I'm like, you're a mom. Like you're not supposed to have the same level of energy you had when you didn't have a human to, yeah. to care for. So um, you need to give yourself grace and you need to sleep. Yes. And you will find that you go further with that. So the more rest you get, you're going to the ease of things coming in will be easier because you're not I gotta fight and work for it so it's more of like give yourself the rest and you'll start to attract that more do you know why energy. I slept last week why I started sleeping because of Prinzen because of that I was very serious with you guys because the bad habit um I got an email from his teacher because he got to school late and uh I couldn't take him to school that day, so Shay dropped him off. But Shay dropped him off hella late because Shay wanted to sleep in too. And the teacher was like, hey, we start school at, th- at oh. 8.30. <laughs> Your husband, you know, just brought him here at 11. 11? But, but she didn't address it to my husband. She addressed it to me. Oh. Dear Maricela. Oh. And I was like, first off, you need to address it to both of us. Right. No. Exactly. So I got in my feels. Yeah. But when I saw that, like, our sleep, maybe my partner's sleeping patterns were affecting, like, even my son, like, getting up. Mm. Um, my first reaction was I'm about to like respond and let this principal know that she needs to address it to both. Like I was going to make it about, <laughs> right? but, but what you really want to, yeah, no, I, was, I, I was about I to make it about like how it should have been about me and both of my partner when she addresses right. me. But what I did, cause and that's I, a part of it. Yes, it should have. I took yeah. that. That wasn't the, that wasn't the point though. Like no, my, my child yeah. got there late and it was due to our bad sleeping patterns. Right. And I have never been a morning person. And so I called my rational um, girlfriend up. Shout out to Cherie. And I was like, is this inappropriate? Because I'm going to email the principal, this, this, and this. And she was like, yes. And consult me before you ever respond oh, to anybody. Dang. Because dang. The way, because what you are addressing is dang. inaccurate. She was like, you're in your feels and you're taking it personal because like, you're a new mom and you think right. it's like questioning your motherhood. But then when principals email you and it's just addressed to one parent, they see you guys as partners in a united front. She doesn't think that she needs to mention both of your names because you guys are partners. And I was like, uh, oh, that's a whole different- I'm a new mom. You've been a mom for like 20 years. Give me a break. Right. So like, yeah. so it was, it was a moment. And then she was like, and the second thing, like, why are you bringing your kid late to school? And I was like, well, my mom used to bring me late. She didn't get responsible till she was older. I was like, so I don't appreciate time. And she's like, but Princeton's not going to appreciate time. Yeah. She was like, and you're disrupting everybody else's learning in the class. And this should be common sense. Why are you, do you think like this? And I'm going to blame it on the fact that I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> so in that moment, though, I because I needed to hear the logical right. side of it, it made sense to me. I was like, oh, I'm creating all these nuggets. And I'm affecting all these people that I didn't even know me not sleeping right. was affecting. I'm affecting the other little kids in Princeton oh, school that yeah. are being disrupted. And she was like, and another thing, all these parents pay their private school tuition, too. Yeah, you and Shay are over here thinking like, well, we pay, you know, we can drop off our kid whenever. She was like, all oh, those parents pay for a premium education. Right. You guys are taking advantage and dropping your kid off late, disrupting. And I was like, oh my God, these are great Dang. points. I She's was like, a good friend too. shout out to Sherry. So I went home to Shay yeah. and I was like, we're going to bed early. 
I was like, we're creating bad habits. And he was like, what friend did you talk to? Oh, oh well, he has to respect <laughs> who it came from. Yeah, and I know he's going to respect her. She's an attorney, y'all. I was like, sure, he broke it down doing. to me. Yeah. And he was like, okay. He was like, she's making good points. And, yes. and I was like, this is what we need to do for the family. We need to be going to bed on time. We need to get in bed early. You and I need to be getting more sleep. And like, these are things that we know, but I needed to hear mm-hmm. the long-term mm-hmm. effects. I needed to hear, it's crazy that I had to be this convinced of something that I should just know better. But because I've had bad habits... That's the thing. And I rationalize these bad habits. Spots and we yeah. all have them. We don't know just because we're used to doing things a certain way doesn't mean it works in the real world. So And I can see it in, I can mm. see it when it comes to relationship and everything else, but sometimes I need it when it comes to like parenthood right. and other things. And sometimes we need that person to like speak some sense into us. Right. But you saying these things are all resonating because I'm like, <laughs> this just happened. I just had a moment when you're talking about sleep. Right. So yes, you guys. That's, it's important. Like, take care of you. And That's, talk to your friends yeah. before you email, if you please. Do. Oh, my God. Or, yes, I really concur with that. So I um, sent a nice email. I was like, thank you. I will be more on top of it. Like, I sent, like, an appropriate email back. Yeah. I'm proud of myself. Oh, good. I'm proud of you, too. That's actually a good learning lesson. I love that. Yes. Um, let's see. Okay, so. Energy. Yes, of course. Yeah, you guys learn your lessons, too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, partnerships. This is a auspicious. Okay, so while J- Jupiter is in our seventh house, that's relation. So for the single Scorpio rising or Scorpio people, this is usually an opportune time to meet new people. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a good time to be in the streets. If you're already in a relationship, this is good for a partnership. Mm. Sometimes your partner gains and it benefits you <laughs> because it's our seventh house. Yes. So like Shay, let's wish some blessings upon yes, them. Yes, blessings you've been- to the blessings. Yeah. So that could happen. So that energy is through May of next year. So. Mm. And then at, then Jupiter will be in the eighth house. We could be um, <clears throat> real estate, um, making money through like mergers and acquisitions, like that mm. sort of thing. So maybe we'll do some home <clears throat> renovations. Right. Greater yeah. property oh, that value. actually would be good for that. Yeah. So. But this was just like you did a reading for me. I'm just looking right here. On your you can do friend. this individually for every single person. If right. they if you had their like birthday, hometown right. and birth time. Exactly. You yeah. guys need to be getting your readings like this. Yes. So when she's telling me things like this, because she's able to like see my full chart and she's been studying it, she's able to uh, articulate to me like certain things or times that I can take advantage of things. Mm-hmm. And yes, I'll be like, oh, I can make sense of that or that clicks. What I like is hearing that voice in the back of my head that because I, I like drive and I like motion. And when I'm feeling complacent or lazy, if I know, like I told you guys earlier, that that window exists or this is when I should be like taking action or preparing for something that moves me like that actually Mm -hmm. will have me start to prepare for something. Mm -hmm. And the way that I rationalize it, even like with my clients, if I'm like, okay, and I always use my 20 doors example. If there are 20 doors that you have to go through in order to meet the love of your life, you're not going to stop at door number one, two, and three because we know he's behind door number 20 and we get stuck when we stop behind that door or we give up. But if we had something that let us know like, no, for sure he's behind door number 20. It'll be easier to release those bad habits, easier to release those toxic relationships, easier to release. So we really have to believe that something is in store for us as a driving force, whether it's love, whether it's finances. And I'm someone who needs that for motivation. I need inspiration. Some people like my husband have pure, just self-determination. And it's like, he can tell himself just a a positive thought and that's enough. Mm -hmm. I need like a force behind me. I need a coach. I need like all, this stuff i need uh, my vision board a roadmap i need my astrology yeah. i need 20 friends in my back corner like i need a lot yeah, sure but i know that about myself and yeah. i will pull together whatever resources i need in mm-hmm. order to like make that happen mm-hmm. but if you're somebody who's not just like self-driven just 100 on your own and you need those other things i think astrology is a great way to just add a little like extra vitamin in your shake right oh i love that oh i love that you can That's use it, it. yeah <laughs> You know what I'm saying? When you need that little boost, I so we need that with that vitamin C boost, that vitamin D boost. Like I think it's really like a little boost, and I, I need like that, that boost because I will be like you guys. Mm-hmm. I read the Bible. I I spoke to you know every person that I trust. I I've prayed on it. I've meditated. I'm eating all the stuff. I'm working out. I need a little bit more. And yeah. when I turned to you that day, it was because I had exhausted all of. I was like I talked to my mom, and she always speaks life into me. Right. I just need that extra little kick to tell mm-hmm. me, okay. 
next May, if I make some investments in real estate, right. I might get a return. And now I'm going to be, I'm going to do house renovation. I'm like, oh, I kind of was thinking about yes, that. Yes. So it just, it just helps. It helps with the confidence in that choice, but also gives me the nudge that I need. Yeah. I think people struggle with the timing part sometimes because they're like, you mean two years? I remember an astrologer told me something with that. And he, I would, he was like, two, I'm like, two years? Think about how fast two years went oh my by gosh. in COVID, you guys. Like, crazy. I don't even, time really doesn't exist, right? It's like we have this mm-hmm. construct of time, but um, that's why you have to live in the moment because that's all that matters anyway. And then you will eventually wake up and you're in this space. Yeah. It's so like your client that you said sent you the ultrasound. The baby, yeah. Like she was in this space and then she wakes up and now she and has now a she has baby. a full blown different right. life yeah <laughs> like that's like that that's the beauty of life to me like that is like I live for those moments. I love how we say time doesn't exist when it's like a good opportunity I know, right? because you just told me how important it is to get my son to school on time I'm like I thought time didn't exist that doesn't work though for the principal there damn it but now time doesn't exist okay <laughs> make a choice <laughs> No, I'm you guys. I fool you guys a lot, but really, I want you guys to um, just use all the research that we have. I'm not pushing for like, oh, you have to believe, but I do think that it's something fun, and I don't think that we use our imagination enough. I don't think that we explore and we're playful enough. I definitely don't think that astrology should be an excuse for us to not do the work that we need for our mental health, right. for education, for any tools that we need that can advance us in our love life or our career. I think that we should always be pouring into ourselves. But I do think that it's fun to be informed about it. It makes for a great conversation piece mm-hmm. and it just makes you a more interesting person and allows for competitive energy and have a commonality with other people. When you do ask like, what's your sign or what's your rising or your moon and like, it helps us like have some playful banter about personality traits. And then the other person can say like, oh no, actually I'm not like that. I'm like this. I just think that it's a, an interesting thing that we can explore and we shouldn't be afraid of because I used to be afraid of it. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm going to go to hell if yeah. I believe yeah. that I'm a Capricorn. I know. It's a, that, that, yeah, you can, it's not religious. I mean, it could be for some people, I guess, do what you want, but you know, it's just more of like uh, if you're if we're all here to have some sort of like soul enlightenment or growth, this is just a way to get there. Just like maybe someone's yoga practice yeah. or, you know, whatever you use. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's and, but it can be fun, too. I do love that people like know their charts now and yeah. stuff like that just makes it. It tells me a lot. I do the com- computer thing in my head and then. And they love to hear about themselves. Yes, <laughs> so, right? <laughs> you love, speak to our souls. Ex- exactly. They just love it. So, <laughs> Ta, Okay. I want um, people to be able to get like your resources. Yes. I love that you filled everybody's cup up today with um, their signs. And of course, I always love my cup filled up. Um, and getting to see you is always pleasurable for me. But I really just, the goal was people to be hopeful that like love is in store next year, socially, um, socializing, and that they have something to look forward to. But I want them to be able to continue down the journey with you if they right. want to explore astrology more yes or if they need gift of the nile let them know what resources you have for them how they can find you uh how they can explore more about astrology if they want to yeah so if you're should i look into this camera (laughs) i'm breaking the fourth wall um (laughs) if if you want to reach me for a personal reading um you can go to astrofashionista.com slash go to the services page um you can book you know one-on-one reading you can learn about your year you can do your natal chart you can have a relationship reading um you can follow me at astro fashionista mostly on ig um and i like to converse with people if you send me a message or, or, and i'll share horoscopes and articles and things like that and then for gift of the nile gift of the nile is my wellness brand that's rooted in egyptian ritual um so it's linked to the stars but it has an egyptian flair it's very luxurious and Violet glass and aromatherapy. It's very yummy. Um, so that's the gift of the Nile.com and at gift of the Nile. So yes, I have it all over my house in like every room. Uh, <laughs> you're all the energy. Yes. <laughs> if you just even like sense, then you'll love it. But if you're someone that believes in shifting the space based on, you know, ritual, then you'll love it even more. And you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mati. Go to the spicylife.com. Make sure that you click it and subscribe to the Spicy Life podcast. Share this episode with a friend. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.